And now, the spousal embarrassment part of the evening. <laughs> Respected and esteemed educator and administrator, Katie O'Hare Gibson, lives and grew up right here in the hardcore ghetto streets of Lexington, Massachusetts. <laughs> Teaches in the public schools, uh, is now a board co-chair here at First Parish. She is a very loving mother and an oh-so-patient spouse. Would you please welcome Katie O'Hare Gibson. So it was a Saturday night. I had the lights turned down low some quiet music, candles, and I cuddled up with my journal. I was at that time in my life where I had had enough experience that there were some things that I wanted to change. And I had heard journaling was a great way to do this. I'm not much of a journaler, but I was trying. One night, I sat with a journal, and I did what my father taught me. When you have a problem that you need to address, you make a list. So I made two lists. This is what I want to invite into my life in a partner. There was the, these are the things I'm looking for and the, these are the things I've tried and no longer want to repeat. And so that was that Saturday night and I closed the journal and put it on the shelf. And over the last next few months, I revisited that journal once in a while if I'd meet someone that I thought I found interesting and I'd open the journal, and I was really good at trying to convince myself, yeah, that's not so important, it's okay, I'm interested, this, this might work. And after a few tries, I found, yeah, I really need that list, <laughs> and I need to use that list. So fast forward a couple months, it's another Saturday night, and I was trying something else that I had thought I'd wanted to try, is to go to a poetry reading. It wasn't something I was used to, and. I was trying some new things, so I went to a poetry reading, and there was this one poet there, and every once in a while I'd kind of glance over and catch him looking at me and look away, and then I'd look over and he'd catch me looking at him and he'd look away, I'd look away. So after the reading, I went over and said, hello, thank you, I really enjoyed your work. And he said, oh, thank you, thanks for coming out, what's your name? And I told him, and he said, oh, thanks. And I went away. And that was it. Now, if you talk to him, he would tell you there's a little more to that. He would tell you, yeah, and then I invited you, and I told you I was going to be at the Lizard Lounge, and you should come. But my story proves that that's not true. <laughs> because I know what happened next. And that was I went to my car, and I checked my voicemail, and my friends had left me a message of where they were going to be and what they were doing. And I thought, you know, that was good. I tried the poetry reading thing. I should, you know, go do that. But this one poetry reading was part of a series of a poetry marathon weekend or some festival. And I thought, no, I see my friends all the time. I can catch up with them next weekend. This is something I want to try. I'll go to that other late night reading. But I was a little nervous. This one was in a more like club, nightclub type thing. And going in there by myself felt a little awkward. So I went to the Starbucks across the street, and I sat in the plate glass window with my steamed milk, and it was raining, and I sat and looked out, and it felt all romantic. But I was looking at the door of the club, thinking, well, if I see him go in, then I'll go in, and if I don't see him go in, I'll just go home or go meet with my friends. And my Gemini selves started talking to each other. And one Gemini self thought, oh, this is so romantic. And the other one said, Katie, you have prided yourself on becoming an independent woman, living on your own, being strong, feminist. What are you doing? You don't watch a door hoping some man is going to walk in and deciding if you're going, that's going to decide what your plans. You do this. So my other Gemini self said, you're right, you're right, I'm sorry. OK, I am going in. And I did go into that poetry reading. And I went in, and I looked around, and sat by myself, and thought, hey, I'll just enjoy the poetry. And he did walk in about 15 minutes later with a couple other poets. And I noticed him. And as my way to the bathroom, I walked past him and 
we said hello and we started talking. And we went, left that place, went to talk some more, found an IHOP because it was 2 a.m. and where else do you go? And we talked some more. And we spent a lot of time just talking, getting to know each other. So the first chance I had, I went over and I thought, oh, this is great, and you know, this is really exciting. And then I thought, ooh, lists. <laughs> I've made this mistake before. I'm going to check my lists. And so I opened the book, and I looked at the things I wasn't looking for, and I found, hmm, yep, those, I didn't see any evidence of those. We're good. And I looked at the other side. Cares about community more so than himself. Yeah, I think I heard that. Spiritual. Oh, we talked about our views on God over that plate of pancakes at IHOP. Yep, <laughs> that one's checked off. And I went through a few others and thought to myself, hmm, this just might work. And I'm still here because I'm going to introduce our next storyteller. <laughs> and I didn't read the notes of what I was supposed to introduce him. So that's why I'm laughing. Anyway, you can hear another version of this story and decide which one you think sounds about right to you. Please welcome our next storyteller, Reggie O'Hare Gibson.